Born in 1947, Michel Chion is a French film theorist and composer of experimental music. He has published several seminal books on the relationship between image and sound in film, such as Audiovision, Sound on Screen, The Voice in Cinema, and Sound in Cinema, as well as numerous studies of individual directors and films. In his books on sound, Chion developed a lexicon that imparts a precise understanding of image-sound relations. One of his most notable concepts is the acousmetra, the topic of this video, which will proceed by providing an overview of the concept and analyse a number of examples from films that display different variations of this phenomenon. The term acousmetra is constituted by an amalgamation of the word acousmatic, which refers to sound that can be heard without the source being seen, and etre, the French verb to be or being. Altogether, an acousmetra refers to a special type of character in cinema that exists as an off-screen voice that can be heard but not seen. Distinct from a detached narrator commonly found in the documentary genre, Xion clarifies that an acousmetra is always implicated within the unfolding action despite its unlocatable source. Further to this, Xion identifies four unique qualities that the acousmetra possesses. First, the acousmetra has the power of seeing all. Second, the power of omniscience, and third, the omnipotence to act on the situation. Let us add that in many cases there is also a gift of ubiquity. The acousmetra seems to be able to be anywhere he or she wishes. These powers, however, often have limits we do not know about and are thereby all the more disconcerting. A classic example of an acousmetra is HAL 9000, the murderous artificial intelligence that controls the systems of the Discovery 1 spacecraft in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. The qualities that Xion attributes to the acousmetra are, at first, epitomised by HAL and asserted through his machinic voice of unnerving equanimity. The computer is able to see all that happens on the spacecraft, he possesses an intellect that surpasses the capabilities of humans, he has the ability to control the systems of the spacecraft, and his presence appears to pervade the profilmic space. Another commonly cited example of this phenomenon is the character of the wizard in Victor Fleming's The Wizard of Oz, who is, at first, also granted a powerful presence through the use of a disembodied voice. Although this presence is quickly divested of the qualities Xion identifies upon the revelation that a mere man behind a curtain is the source of the voice. This process, the visualization of a character that was at one point an acousmetra, is what Xion terms deacousmatization, or visualized sound. In other words, when we see that the wizard is a man like any other, as well as sense the gulf between his human voice and the artificially amplified voice that he tried to project as an acousmetra, the perceived power of the latter completely deflates. Xion accounts for this deflation by pointing out that when the source of a sound is visualized, it takes on a certain and therefore limited form. On this process, Xion writes that visualized sound is an embodied sound, identified with an image, demythologized, classified. In the case of the wizard, this embodiment is quite literal. Seeing the sound of the wizard take on a human form reminds one of all the vulnerabilities and frailties of the human condition, which ultimately undermines the projected transcendence of the acousmetra. If we consider the initial example of Hal, however, complications arise. The partial visualization of Hal in the form of the searing red lens does little to diffuse his oppressive presence. As the film unfolds, the astronaut makes the mistake of only comprehending Hal as an ear, as a being that only gathers information sonically rather than the ear and eye that he actually is. In fact, Hal's ability to use visual information, namely lip read, only functions to amplify the powers signaled by his voice. Like a dome CCTV camera, Hal's concave, lifeless eye contains no emotion or direction. There is no way to discern what exactly he is looking at, which fosters the intimidating impression of being quite literally an all-seeing eye. This perceptual ambiguity is further exacerbated by the lack of emotion conveyed by Hal's eye, and shrouds his motives and abilities in uncertainty. It appears then that when the embodiment of an acousmetra comes in a machinic or at least ambiguous and unemotive form, the process of deacousmatization does not occur, but rather the exact opposite. Instead of deflating the powers once asserted by the acousmetra, the indistinct visualization of such only acts to amplify those qualities further in a process that I am calling 
hyper acousmatization. Altogether, the interval that emerges between image and sound is something unique to cinema, and the ability to manipulate the relationship between these two dimensions of the medium offers the filmmaker endless creative possibilities. This video has shown that the acousmetra, a voice character that can be heard but not seen, is but one of these. Whether the source of that character is a machine, or a human, or something else entirely, the sonic phenomenon identified by Xion demonstrates how the voice, and indeed sound more broadly, can be used to great effect in cinema.